what's up guys my name is zach and today i am driving a 1990 buick riata up front is a 3.8 liter v6 and down below is a four speed automatic transmission now i am super excited to be making this video because the buick riata is just one of those 80s and 90s cars that you don't really see much of anymore they only made about 21,000 of them throughout their four year run and so they're only getting more rare this has just over 30,000 miles on it it's a time capsule it's a beautiful example and I I'm just so incredibly excited and thankful for the opportunity to share it with you today. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 3.8 liter V6 under the hood. Well, this was sort of the earlier stages of the 3800 that we came to know and love throughout the 90s and 2000s. The 3.8 liter did exist in the late 80s. We had the red dot 3.8 liter, but it didn't get its series number till a little bit later on. However, it is still very reliable. It still makes good power, and that's all I can ask for. Plus, a V6 in a vehicle like this does give it that little extra push where a lot of sport coupes in the era did have four cylinders so this was definitely a nice little bonus like i said paired to it is a four speed automatic transmission that's the only way that the riatas ever came was with a four speed although they did update it through the riata's life this is fine it's doing the job and i'm not going to complain Last but not least about the drivetrain, of course, the Riata is front wheel drive with that transversely mounted 3.8. How does it feel to drive a Riata? Well, it does feel a little bit smaller on the inside and it does feel sporty, both of which are not words that I commonly use when driving Buicks. This was a little bit out there and Buick knew that. Buick wanted that. They wanted a halo car so badly that they actually built its own plant. This was meant to be something sporty and special. Now, is it the sportiest drive I've ever had from this era? No, not at all. It's an interesting mix because it feels like it should be sporty, but at the end of the day, it really isn't. It does have that punch from the 3.8, but still when you take a corner, it's very leisurely, like a Buick is and like a Buick should be. So it's a very, very odd space. Visibility is okay. You actually do have decently thick A-pillars. And out the back, it actually has this nice curved glass, which does help with the visibility. Steering is a little bit heavy for a Buick. Again, more sporty. But the suspension is soft, like a Buick. So again, it rides that line and dances on either side depending on the situation. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, we get to talk about the digital gauges. Absolutely beautiful voltage and temperature to the left, oil pressure and fuel to the right, tachometer and speedometer in the center with a digital speedometer. This was huge for 1990 and of course when the Riata debuted in 1988. This was part of that era and I just love this design and it's actually held up really well over the last few decades. On the steering wheel, we don't have anything besides the Riata badge again. Buick was trying to do something really special, so this has Riata specific badges as opposed to just Buick badges. Off to the left, we do have our headlight switches, parking lights, instrument panel lights, fog lights, and a climate vent. And moving on to the door, we have our latch to get in and out, lock and unlock, power mirrors, our seat adjustments, and power windows. Again, Buick in this era was doing the seat adjustments on the door. Pretty typical for Buick, but pretty odd to see here today. Moving into the center, we do have our electronic climate control with a digital readout here. By level, econ, temperature, and auto, really, really nice features. And down below, we have the radio, which does have a bunch of very 80s equalizers in it. Love to see that, as well as it does have an auto reversing cassette deck. Off to the right of that, we do have another climate vent. And down below, we have a little storage cubby, but it also comes with a plaque that was made for the original owner from Buick. Again, they wanted something special. And this is something that Buick did in a couple of their vehicles throughout time. But if you custom ordered it, they would give you a custom badge. Down below, we do have the shifter. This is very 90s. Big push button really reminds me of the F-Body Camaro. However, 
Very interestingly enough, it actually says park, reverse, neutral drive, second, and first fully written out. It's not D, R, one, two. They actually wrote it all the way out. And I like that little touch. Then we do have an ashtray and cigarette lighter because it is the 90s, don't forget and some coin holders and a center console to finish out the interior, meaning there weren't any factory cup holders here in the Riata, so it fails naturally the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Now, the seats are really comfortable. Again, speaking more towards Buick rather than sportiness, they don't have high bolsters. They're not hard to get in and out of, although the vehicle is a little hard to get in and out of because of how low it is. But the actual structure and feeling of the seats is wonderful, and I am a big, big fan. However, we don't have any back seats, and I am thanking my lucky stars here today because I am in no mood to jam myself into a confined space, but I don't have to because the Riata doesn't have back seats. It actually has storage containers. This was a trend in the 1980s. If they didn't do back seats, they would sort of do back seat looking storage compartments. The FDRX7 did this, and so the Buick Riata also did it. However, we do have a trunk. So let's go hop around there and do a trunk review. All right, so we're on the back of the Buick Riata, and this is the era where GM was still using two keys. So the black key, the square key was for the ignition, and the silver circle key is for the trunk. Put it in here, teeth down for GM, teeth up for Chrysler. Pull it up here, and as you can see, it's not a very big trunk. However, the owner does have a sealed Buick Riata 124 scale assembled model. Very, very cool. We will not be taking that out of the box, but very cool to see that. Not a whole ton of space. And that was one of the big downsides of the Riata because you didn't get a whole lot of storage with that weird back seat thing. Not a whole lot of storage here. Uh, you know, it was a very personal car. This wasn't meant for cross country road trips with the whole family, including the dog, as the Buick Roadmaster was in this era. So very cool to see, but that's the trunk of the Riata. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I, of course, love the look of the Riata. Who can deny pop-up headlights? Anyone with a heart beating in their chest cannot, and I love the look. I like the sleek lines, I like the bubble rear window. Overall, I think this is such a lovely looking vehicle. And of course, finished in red. I always imagine the Riata either in red or white. So to be reviewing a red one here today is fulfilling that childhood prophecy. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a Buick Riata for the first time here on the Shooting Cars YouTube channel? Well, this car could only really exist in the 80s and 90s. It just has that feeling about it. It. Much like the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off could only exist in the 80s. Once social media and cell phones became a thing, the whole plot of that movie kind of falls flat on its face. And that's the same here today. Today's modern car market has no place for the Riata. There isn't really any demand for something quite like this. But back in the 80s and 90s, there was. Personal luxury was something that people would shop for. Coupes with luxury and yet sportiness too. At the end of the 80s, we saw so many cool sports cars coming out. The Mazda RX-7 was turbocharged, the Celica, the Supra, the Eclipse. And so Buick wanted a hand in that pie or whatever that saying is. Now they projected that they would make 20,000 a year and sell by the boatload. They built a whole factory for this and they ended up selling 21,000 over the entire model run. Not many people bought this because it was a more expensive car and to pay an expensive price to not get back seats, to not get a big trunk, well, that didn't make much sense. You want bang for your buck? Well, you didn't buy a Buick Riata. And so they didn't sell all that well. And after a single generation and four model years, they pulled the plug and Buick's flagship was no more in a similar way that Cadillac did the exact same thing with the Cadillac Elante. The Cadillac Elante was a very expensive two-door convertible that they were hedging all their bets on and it fell flat on its face too. But that's not because the Riata isn't a lovely car. I think it was probably just positioned poorly in the market, priced too high, or just straight up overlooked. And that's a shame 
because this is such a cool piece of Buick and GM's history and automotive history. A time when you could buy a luxury coupe. A time when everyone seemed to be on the cutting edge of technology. A beautiful time. And to me, it's so cool to be driving this time capsule. It's such a privilege to show this to you today. And so if you learned anything from this, if you take anything from this video, if you hate the sound of my voice, just put it on mute and just enjoy the sights of a 32,000 mile Buick Riata. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Jim for not only letting me drive, but preserving this awesome automobile. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.